feed through from this guy? Hmm? I don't think so. Fine. Hey, here we are. So obviously, it's EE102 day. EE102 demo day. Um, so just to just so today's the day when we'll, we we hope to hope to convince you that all the stuff we've looked at from the beginning of the class all the way up to like last lecture um, basically isn't BS. It actually works. Uh, and like when the stuff when you, uh, you stuff you designed on your homework and and worked out or stuff we worked out in the lectures, it really works just exactly that way. So at least well we'll see what happens. So in fact Leo built all this. I don't want to take even the slightest bit of credit. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll just poke through. We have a couple, we have a, uh, a, we'll have a bunch of demos and I don't know, it should be just fun. So ask questions and stuff. It'll, I think we're not totally, or, we're not totally organized up here anyway. So we'll just make this, um, you know, I guess kind of like uh, a talk show, kind of uh, electronics, uh, <laughs> electronics studio with uh, Leo and Steven. Um, so let's see, we'll start with our first, uh, the first demo is an oscillator. Can you go, and if you can go down here, or, well, yeah, well, okay, first of all, I'll show you what we got. Can, is there, you guys want to try to zoom in on that right there, this little area here? No. Wow. And now, yeah, there you go. So here's, right here, uh, ah, there we go. It zoomed way in, and it's not, okay. So right here, I'm going to help these guys out a little bit. There we go. So right here is uh, is in fact the uh, the oscillator. Um, that's our that's our famous oscillator from that lecture. Um, here's your your R. Here are your R's. I don't know if you can see them that well, but there's there's a, there's three R's here. Here's your three C's right here. Um, there's actually two op amps here, and we'll explain that in just a second why there's two op amps. Here's that. Uh, here's the feedback resistor. And this is the, uh, the resistor that sets the gain. It's a variable resistor. Um, instead of being, this is a 1K resistor. And according to our theory, this should be 29K. What we're going to see in a minute is if you made it 29K, it wouldn't work. Or it would work some days, but not others. We'll see why that's true in a minute. So it's variable, and we'll mess with that to see what happens. Um, let's see. Can you, uh, oh boy, this is, I feel, yeah, you know what I'm going to do for these poor guys? I'm going to do that. Just because, uh, can you uh, actually go down to what would be the oscilloscope? Ah, and now you, maybe you could zoom out a little bit. Okay, so here is uh, here's the circuit uh, as it appears in the lecture. So it's it's uh, it's a big uh, RC network. It's RC 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 like that. And in fact, here is the circuit that Leo built. In fact, um, and what it is is uh, it is. <laughs> It can, here's your R and your C, and your R and your C, and your R and your C. Um, if he had dumped this directly in to this inverting amplifier, it would see an input resistance of 1K, uh, which you could compensate for uh, easily. Uh, but to make it simpler, he just put a buffer here. There's a buffer that has, so this has infinite input impedance, that has zero, and then that drives this thing. This is 1K, and a, it's a 50K variable resistor, so we can vary the gain basically from zero, uh, from one, zero to 50. And of course, all the action we expect to happen right around 29. So that's the uh, that's the picture. So what the uh, what the oscilloscope is showing now um, is the uh, is is simply the the output here. It's also uh, we're also listening to it on the speaker, and I think we're going to let. Uh, well, I. Uh, sorry, there we go. All right, they will let you want to do the honor. You sure. built it. Okay. Okay. So explain what you're doing. <laughs> the gain right now is about 28, by the way. So what that means is that the uh, here should we should we actually just mention it? Look at some of the theory first, and then then zoom off. All right. So actually, if you go back down uh, back down the oscilloscope uh, here, um, this shows uh, the positions of the pole. Uh, this shows the positions. Of the, uh, of the poles of, of that uh, system, or the zeros of the characteristic polynomial, um, as a function of the gain. If, if the gain is zero, the poles are negative and real. They're right here. As you increase that gain, the pole, these come, come together. They split apart. And right here, they cross the j omega axis. And at that, that corresponds to a gain of 29. 
If you increase the gain above 29, the, the poles actually move off and they have a, po a positive real part, which of course means that, the, uh, that it's a growing uh, sinusoid. So what, what's going to happen is right now, the gain is set as about 28. The, close, the characteristic polynomial roots are about right there. Of course, they've decayed. They're all decayed. Leo's going to increase the gain up to about 29. And right around 29, what's going to happen? This thing will burst into oscillation, right? And then he'll, he'll play with it a couple of times. And for example, if he then cranks it slightly below the critical number 29, you'll end up with two, uh, two roots of the characteristic polynomial with slightly negative real parts. And so what you'll see then is a decaying, or at least according to 102 theory, you're going to see a decaying um, sinusoid. So let's see if we actually see it. Yeah. All right, you're going to hear it. Yeah, so in fact, we may, in fact, let me, let me warn you, we, we might do something radical and like on the final, have a listening portion of the exam. <laughs> you laugh. Dare, is that a dare? You take that, oh, okay. All right. No, seriously, we'll, we'll play stuff to you. We'll play stuff to you and you'll have to estimate the Q. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. They're, they're laughing. They don't, we haven't made up the final yet, so that's a, that's a credible threat. Okay, so we're ready to go. The, uh, the scope here shows the output, right? So right now... Oh, we should probably focus. Yeah, there we go. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm slowly going to increase the gain, and if all goes well, all of a sudden, the oscillator will kick in, all right? So here we go. Oh, the R's and C's are such that you expect resonance around 3 kilohertz, okay? All right. Here we go. So I'm going to twiddle the gain now, slightly. There you go. Oops, sorry. Okay. Let's just leave it right there. That's good. So this this quickly gets annoying, of course. Um, okay, so actually, let me explain what's happening here. Right now, the gain is a little more is is a little bit bigger than twenty nine. It's a bit bigger than 29, and we can even estimate how much bigger by watching how rapidly this rises. We could turn the power on, cycle, it off, cycle the power on and off, and watch how rapidly this thing rises like this. Um, and that would actually be able, we'd estimate actually how far into the right half plane the two poles are easily. We could do that. What's limiting it right now, I think you can even see at the very bottom right down here. You see that, how that's flat right down here? That's what's limiting it. If this were a truly linear system, this thing would grow until it's 15 volts peak to peak, 150, 400, 4 kilovolts, this kind of thing. But of course, these op amps, uh, they clip at plus minus 12 volts, plus minus 11 volts or something like that. So what happens is it grows according to the linear model until the linear model is no good anymore. And then it just, it's locked right there. So, okay, okay. what do you want to do? You want to extinguish it. it, try to extinguish it just to get now, if he cranks the gain just a little bit below the threshold, this should decay nice and smoothly. Let's there you go. Oh. There you go. Look at that. Everybody hear that? So you just heard and saw, you just heard and saw an eigenvalue. Uh, so, oh, sorry, that's from another class. <clears throat> um, <laughs> that's the more advanced class. Sorry, the, you just heard and saw a root of a characteristic polynomial that was just barely in the left half plane. Okay. So that, that, these, that's what you're looking at. So now here goes, here goes the fun part. This is adjusted to be, this is probably, the, again, a little bit more than 29. Because if it was 29, it would kind of sit there. And you know what would happen, in fact, if this was exactly 29? What would happen is, if it, if, it ever, if, it, if it ever got less than 29, the thing would start fading. If it got more than 29, it'd be OK, because it'd be limited by the nonlinearity. Um, so if, if we just plugged in, if we just left it like this, actually, this would probably work. But if we cranked it down a little bit, the whole thing would be very sensitive. Because if anything reduced the gain, even by 1%, these two, uh, sorry, these two poles would move into the left half plane, and the oscillation would die. And it would, you'd, see a, you'd, see, you'd see it decay, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what, would, what, what, what would change the gain here? Just something practical. What would, what? For example, temperature would do it. Um, if you're building a zillion, a gazillion of these things, this wouldn't be practical because when you when you buy these things, the gain would be slightly different as they come off the manufacturing line. That the resistors are plus minus one percent. That's enough to like screw the whole thing up. Go ahead. Okay. So 
before, if you can go down to the scope, I'd like yeah. to show what we're going to do. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, this, this, this resistor here, the 1K resistor, um, Leo's going to freeze it with some Freon. And what happens when you freeze it? Uh, you, you, you tell them. Okay. <laughs> so you, you, guys, you guys have to infer what happens to resistance as we freeze it, okay? They have to know the temperature coefficient of resist of uh, what's the temper what's the temperature coefficient of metals? Uh oh, huh? It's very po it, it's very positive. As you heat a, a metal up, it gets the the, um, the resistance gets gets higher. Okay. How about carbon? Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So so he's going to freeze it, and what's going to happen? What's going to happen to this resistance as he um, as he freezes it? Can you go back down to the scope here and we'll, yeah. Yeah, it's carbon. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good point. We should carbon, have asked yeah. Him. What's going to happen? Yeah. And what's going to happen to the gain? It's going to go down. Great. And what's going to happen to the oscillator? It'll extinguish. Okay. You go guys ahead. ready? Okay. Oh, here, you should be watching this. Maybe down, you can go down to the scope. Actually, go down to the oscilloscope. But that, yeah, that'll be more more exciting. Okay, oh, sorry. just leave it. Too much, too fast. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what's going to happen now, by the way? What, what's the resistor? It's, it, by the way, it went down to about minus, minus 70 degrees C or something like that. So that's all right. It'll, uh, uh oh. No, it's not. <laughs> the temper oh, the temperature's going up as we speak. It's going up. I don't know what it's up to now. We may okay. have to use the old finger method. <laughs> Here's the heater. Here's the heater. Here's the heater. <laughs> Might take a little bit. Hopefully. What's going to happen is that temperature will go up to uh, should go the temperature. The resistor will get back. It'll get close to room temperature. When it gets close to room temperature, the gain will get high enough. Hey. Well, keep talking. Keep talking. I'm keep talking. Okay, that's what Leo said. <laughs> <laughs> We're not allowed to cheat. If I distracted this, them, you these could. These are the things that work at home, but when you come up to the yeah. class, you have it. Oh, that's a pity. We had it work. It was so nice. You can actually kind of control it with his finger before. Oh, well. Yeah, does, it still, does it still feel cold? Nope. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it again. Maybe you froze the op amp, too. <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> okay, hang on. Second track? Yeah, go down. There you go. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh. Wait, wait, that's actually good right there. All right. Okay, go ahead. Okay, you guys give me a second chance. So I'm gonna I'm gonna freeze it again. Slowly. And don't get the up one. I'm just making that up actually. I don't know what that would do. <laughs> this is the part that we didn't cover in the lecture, by the way. <laughs> and he extinguished it? Well, at least we can extinguish things with, by freezing them. There, we there go. it goes. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if we were to yank this thing out and stick an ohmmeter on it, it really, really would be about 29k. That's what it would be. So, so it's all. If you work out the frequency and everything, it's exactly what's predicted uh, by all this stuff. Uh, probably right, right as they became imaginary. Oh, you know, I should ask a question about this. Say, in in um, if we set up this oscillator and we set everything in an, in zero initial conditions, no charge on the capacitor, even if even if even if the pole, the roots of the characteristic polynomial are in the right half plane, what's the solution? What's the solution of a differential equation when all the initial conditions are zero? This is a good. This is a good thing to think about. What is it? It's zero for sure. Okay. So according, if you're if you're working in the platonic world of E102 paper, pencil, MATLAB, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, a this this thing won't won't work if the initial conditions are zero. Why in practice is it true that the minute, pretty much as soon as those closed loop uh, closed closed loop poles move into the right half plane, the thing bursts into oscillation. Why is that? It's always some 
noise prison. That, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That when you have these, you have these growing exponentials, right? A growing exponential times zero, that is for sure zero. But a growing exponential times even something fantastically small eventually gets big. Uh, in particular, it means if there's even just the slightest charge on those capacitors, the thing will eventually grow. And the other is finally that this thing is being driven by very small noise. Might be even nanovolts. But that's enough to trigger this. Okay. So I, I'm hey, the next setup. Okay, oh, so what, what am I supposed to do? Well, I'll explain the next I'll explain the next demo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the oscillator. That was fun. Okay. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is uh, the Salen key filter. So if you look on page three here of your uh, handout, um, this is one I think we tortured you with. Um, and actually, I, I had to do it because some students caught me. I tried to avoid get out of that. But actually, some students caught me, and I actually had to analyze it, so just to let you know. Um, so here's a Salen, uh, Salen key filter section. This is, in, in fact, exactly what you designed. Um, so the poles are whatever it was. It's minus 10,000 plus minus J 10,000. Um, which is, corresponds to a, a second order low pass filter with a, um, a frequency, uh, a, cut, a, a cutoff frequency of um, 1.6 kilohertz. That's what it corresponds to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if you remember from that, but the gain, uh, you can go down to the uh, oscilloscope over here. Yeah, the gain there that you worked out you needed was 1.59. And you might also have uh, remember that uh, when you did your analysis of the Salen key filter, when this gain varies between zero and three, as you, as you move towards three, this thing here actually becomes unstable, right? And, and meanwhile, as you, as you move there, the, the eigenvalues are here. So, sorry about that, I keep just doing that. I mean, I mean, the closed loop, the zeros of the closed loop polynomial look like this. Here's your nominal design, that's a gain of, um, this is a gain of 1.6, which is what you, your design and your homework called for. If it's zero, it's right there. You have two real poles. And as you increase it, like that, to three, it becomes oscillatory. So that means what we, what we have here is a little filter whose Q, or damping ratio, we can vary because, I'm sorry, if you go over to the, this guy, we'll to actually take a look at the uh, hardware here. That's right in here. Um, and you can actually poke around and see. Here's your, here's your op amp, of course. Um, Let's see what else we have. Here's your, your, your RC and your RC. That's your uh, feedback resistor. And we have a variable resistor here, which Leo just set up to be the correct number for a gain of 1.6 or 1.59 or whatever, your, whatever your, uh, your homework called for. That was it. It was that, right? Something like that. OK, so that's what we've got right now. Um, and we can vary, we'll vary this thing later and, and change the, um, actually, the, the poles there. So we'll, we'll change those and, and see how see if it all, if, if stuff really happens the way we, we and you think it does. Okay, so, I don't know, you wanna? So I, I propose we first look at the frequency response. Perfect, okay. let's go down to the uh, oscilloscope. Okay. okay, explain it. Okay, so here you see two traces. One, the smaller one here, okay, it corresponds to uh, the input I'm applying. So I've set it to be 0.5 volts peak, okay? And then this one here is the output of the Salen key. And um, remember that at, um, at low frequencies, the gain is given approximately by A. So you expect a gain of about 1.6 in the low frequency end, which, which you can see here, actually, because the okay. scales I use for both. I'm going to go to, th there's a, a real low frequency, and I'll even uh, change that. OK, there you go. There's a low frequency. What's a phase shift on that, just quickly? Approximately. Zero, right. That's the left-hand side of the Bode plot. Ga gain with zero. What's the, DC? What's the gain? I was going to say DC. This is close enough. What's the low frequency gain? 1.6. That's probably 1.6. I don't know. Maybe, Let's maybe say it is. Let's give it a okay. So that's um, yeah, all right. Okay. okay. So you can see, actually, now, now if I change the time scale here, you can actually see a little tiny bit of phase shift there. So it's actually, I mean, it, it's just a first cut to say zero phase shift. And it's, it would be exactly what shows up on your Bode plot, OK? So do, should we increase the frequency now and yeah. see what happens? OK. Now I go up to a more moderate frequency. And now what's happening here? What can you see now? 
Yeah, you can see some uh, you can see some phase shift happening now, right? And this is in fact completely consistent with the Bode plot of, of this. Should we look at that? Yeah. Okay, I'll just stick it right here. There's your Bode plot, and in fact, the magnitude plot is the one in the middle, like that. So it should be kind of flat, and then right around uh, right around uh, 1600 hertz, which is uh, 10 to the four radians per second, this thing should fall off rapidly. So actually, ignore the, the phase here, and let me just increase the frequency here and we'll see what happens. Ready? There it goes. Look at that. Everybody see it? Everybody see that? So, in fact, let's, uh, that's your low frequency gain right there, 1.6. So when you're 6 dB down, what's that? that means that, the, that this output curve here is smaller by a factor of 2. And that should be right at the frequency we thought it was. And so, I don't know, it's going to be, it's there, I don't know, it's going to be like that, right? And now you can see, look at this, it rapidly decreases. Hey, by the way, as I crank the frequency up here, if I double the frequency now, how much smaller does that bottom one get? What do you think? Remember? It's, it's 12 decibels per octave. So if I double the frequency, that... That, uh, or here, you want to, let's do it by decades. How about that? Here, we'll do it by decades. Here's, uh, there you go. You're already starting to roll off there. This frequency is, uh, what does that say? That's two kilohertz. two kilohertz. Okay. Now I'm just going to go to 20 kilohertz. That's a punch of a button. And if I just punch a button, we get one decade. So actually, what's going to happen when I press this button? I should make sure I'm going to press the right button. Yeah, I am. Okay. So if I press this button, what's going to happen? Frequency is going to go up by a factor of 10. And what are you going to see here? What? Factor of what? Four. Oh, no, wait. I said the frequency is going up by a factor of 10. Oh. Yeah? What's 40? So, so one, of those, one of those, the output curve is going to go down in amplitude by a factor of what? 100. What does that mean, visually speaking? Yeah, this is what we call a line. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Okay, so let's go back to one. Uh, oops, uh, sorry, I went the wrong way. There we go. There's one K. And by the way, what if I go down to 100 hertz? What's going to happen here? Yeah, it's basically that's that's the low frequency regime. There you are. Okay, so it's all there. Okay, let's do one more fun part here, which is I is which is the phase shift. <laughs> Although the phase shift will actually get much more fun uh, later. Um, so for A equals 1.59, what happens is the phase shift actually kind of smoothly varies. And right at the frequency, it should be 45 degrees. Am I right? 90. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to look. It should be 90 degrees right at 2 kilohertz. Um, it's cheating, you see. Oh, well. So, and in fact, that's that at 1.6. So let me put it to 1.6. That's 1.6. And what do you say? Sure, let's call that 90. Let's call that a 90 degree phase shift. It's, it's pretty close. Let's put it that way, right? 180 would be if they were exactly opposite. Zero would be if they lined up with each other. This is pretty much 90 degrees. Actually, it's not really. I mean, here. I don't know. That would do be. Do you guys like know 90. how you can tell a 90 degree phase shift? Yeah, what's, what's, yeah, what's 90 degree phase shift? It looks like sine and cosine. Everybody here gets it, that's not, that you're looking at 90 degrees. Look at the, actually, you know what? The way to, right way to do it is to just look at the zero crossings. Just visually get rid of everything else in the picture, just look at the zero crossings. And you find out that they're intertwined perfectly. That's a 90 degree phase shift like this. Okay, so that's 90 degree phase shift. If I go to a low frequency, that's a, a, a very low phase, a, a low, low phase shift. And if I go to a high frequency, we won't be able to see it because it'll be small. Well, but you get pretty close. You can yeah. Show. Okay. Here. You'll see the 180 degree phase shift. Oh yeah! Look at that. He's right. Look at that. So this is well above cut. Here's here's well above the cutoff frequency. Look at that. The phase is not exactly 180, right? But look at that. It's not bad. It's, it's clearly tending towards 180, right? 180 would be if they were exactly uh, opposite. Okay. You know what we should do now? In, uh, in, let's increase the gain. So let me, um, oh. right? Oh, step response. This is the step response. Let's do that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is... Uh, did, by the way, did you have to do this? Did you have, didn't you have to make the Bode plot of this stupid thing? I think you did. You had to design it, and then you had to make the Bode plot. So all, all this shows is that it really, it really, really, you didn't? Oh, well. You might have. Anyway. 
Um, anyway, all this shows is, is that, in fact, the, uh, you know, the stuff about the Bode plot and frequency response, it really works just, just the way it's supposed to. And now we're going to look at step response. And I should explain how we're going to do this. Um, the way you do step response testing is, is this. Um, you don't just do one step. So in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to apply a voltage, which is a square wave. That's this guy right here, right here. And what we'll do is after a while, we could work out how much of a while that is. These are, these are uh, let's see, that's 0.5 milliseconds. So I don't know, that's four or five milliseconds, which is a number you could have figured out because you know the real parts of those eigen <coughs> poles. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the real part of those poles. Um, and you could have worked out how long it would take, what five time constants is, and that would tell you how long it takes for this thing to totally, for, for, for all the dynamics to die out. Um, so we take something longer than that, then we switch it back. And so uh, that's, and then it's repeated. It's being repeated, I don't know how many times a second, but uh, for, uh, for a lot. No, it's from over here. Yeah, sorry. So it's, oh, well, 220 times a second you're, you're seeing this, okay? So in fact, this thing is the step response. And guess what? That's exactly what it looks like. Uh, in fact, this is your famous, uh, no, this is not your T e to the minus T, sorry. This, is, this has got your cosine term and all that kind of stuff in it, and the T. And in fact, let's look, at, look down here. Um, this is uh, supposed to be that. I think, you know what I think, Leo, I actually think you have your gain set a little bit high because we're getting a little bit more ringing, right? Yep. Okay, so I, th I, I actually think your gain is a little. You can, you, you can tell from here, right? The, yeah. Uh, in fact, let me have your, uh, this thing, do I dare? Okay, so let's see. I'm actually, based on this, I actually think it doesn't match that, uh-oh. Something just popped out, which was, uh, the spe oh, the, just the speaker, we don't wanna listen to it anyway. So watch this, I'm gonna, there we go, look at that, isn't that nice? There, okay, so there, that's probably closer, now it's probably closer to 1.59, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay? So there, 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 there it is. Um, and that's, that's the step response. It settles out to 1.6 times that, which is the DC gain, right? And you could work it out. It's exactly what, what you think it is. Okay. Uh, you know, we're gonna, now we're going now we're gonna increase this, um, let's see, where's our, uh, next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna go over to this uh, Salem and Key thing here, and you see this, this number A, which controls this? We're gonna increase A. And so now you're gonna get this C. Oh, wait a minute, wait. You want to listen to it? Oh yeah, let's listen to it. Yeah. 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 Or, or is that a is that a pain? No, no. No, no. Okay, we'll do it. So uh, you hook it up, and I'll I'll tell them what we're gonna do. Okay. Okay. So uh, we now have here uh, we we just built what you guys uh, what you guys designed, right? So here it is. The, the, you're seeing the step response there. Well, yeah, I guess it has to be in memory now or something like that. That's the step response. And, you know, maybe I'll just draw it down here. That'll, that'll work. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it here and then, and then put it down there. So the impulse response looks something uh, like this. Not exactly sure, but something like that. Okay? Looks something like, uh, like that. In other words, it's got that cosine term in there, so it definitely changes sine. But it rapidly fades out. So it would be something where you'd only see one or two. So it looks something like that. Now, if I ask you, what does convolution with this thing do to a signal? What's the answer? Very, very crudely, what, it, what does it do? If it's 1,600 hertz, then this thing here is 1 1,600th of a second. That's a 1,600th. And that's a, that's a 32 hundredth. So if, if we just made a crude approximation and ignored all this crap here and it just looked like a bump, it's a bump that's 1 32 hundredth of a second, right? That's a third of a millisecond or so wide. Then if someone asks you, what does this thing you designed and Leo built do? The answer is it smooths things out over a third of a microsecond, okay? That's, that's what it does, okay? So we're actually gonna now listen to some audio uh, source First, um, unfiltered, right, and then and then filtered. Now, actually, you have to know a little bit about audio signals and how rapid. Who who know, who's got a rough idea of sort of the range of frequencies for audio signals? What is it, roughly? Yeah, twenty hertz, twenty kilohertz. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, here's, here's some rough ideas to, to understand what you're about to hear. Um, telephone channel stuff is down to about three kilohertz. So that, that's a rough idea. This starts rolling off at 1.6 kilohertz, so it should sound noticeably, I mean, all, all the high frequency stuff will have been filtered away. And what that means is rapid variations in the audio signal that are faster than 330 microseconds have been totally wiped out. So you're gonna, if we look at the audio input and output waveform, the input waveform will have all sorts of little, uh, little have lots of fast motions. The output one will be totally smoothed out. Okay, so uh, what, are, what are you gonna miss? You're gonna miss things like fricatives if it's voice, like things like that. If it's, if it's drums, you won't get the snap. You won't get cymbals, will be totally smoothed out. And then, I don't know what else to say, nothing. Let's just do it, see what happens. Okay, so uh, first we're gonna play the unfiltered. Hey, how come you still uh, have a... Oh, uh, why? Uh, hang on. Or you can just do it. Go ahead. Um, who cares? You want to see the? You, yes, we do want to see. The, no, we don't. No, we don't have. To. You want to first listen to it? Sure. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So what's this? Hope you like Sting. <laughs> oh, right. Wait. Actually, I have to change this to. Uh, which channel are we in? There you go. Do you, do you see all the little wiggles? Go ahead. Let's listen to it filtered. Okay. This is the sailing. This is this is the source. Okay. Remember, this is from homework five. So actually, right now, we're still looking on the oscilloscope at the source. But what would this look like if, if we could actually look at the output? OK, you see all the little wiggles? They'd be smooth. All the other, all the, other the big stuff, the slow stuff, that would kind of be there. So you'd see the slow structure of it. All the fast stuff would be totally sanded off. You want to switch back? And yeah, let's you, compare. You want to A, B? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, this is the filtered output, and actually the oh, scope corresponds yeah. to I should mention something here, actually, that um, this is not only being low-pass filtered at 1600 hertz, but actually has a gain of 1.6. Okay, so uh, it even, it sounds quieter anyway, right, because you've lost everything above 1600 hertz. So this is filtered. Okay. You guys you should ready? be paying attention, because we're not kidding now. There will be a listening portion on the final exam. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. There you go. This is source, yeah. Okay. You guys hear the difference? Yeah, so you can hear the difference. I'm very clear. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is a stupid filter. We made it sound worse. Yeah. No, it's a good, it's, hey, excellent question. Actually, uh, this precise filter is used. You want to know what it's used for? It, this, it's used in a, as a crossover network. Um, this exact filter is used in a, in a crossover network, right? So I don't know how many people have seen this thing live. Okay, this, the way it works, it's used in a crossover network because you, you take the audio source. You had a homework problem on this anyway. So if you saw a very unsophisticated uh, crossover, oh, yeah. the, the electronic ones work like this. They're actually not, they're not two, uh, they're not two pole, which this is, they're actually three and four and five. Um, and then the, the different frequency groups are sent to different types of speakers and things like that. So, in fact, this is used. Uh-oh. What's that? Our next one? That's or? my fault. So, anyway. Okay. Okay, so now... I oh, no, we're going to change the gain now. Yeah. Oh, and let's listen to it, too. What we're going to do now is we're going to change the, uh, the gain. Um, we're going to change the gain, which is going to make the uh, poles move away from the 45-degree angle, and they're going to move up towards the imaginary axis, right? And the frequency response is going to uh, do this. Let me find, okay, can you, yeah, there we go. Can you go down to the oscilloscope here? So the frequency response is going to look like this. Um, as we 
crank the gain up towards three, the frequency response is going to start having a big peak. And if we get it real close to three, it's going to have a real peak. And actually, you might want to ask yourself, what do you think it's going to sound like? Any idea? Huh? Loud? We'll see. Any other ideas? Describe it. You're going to listen to an audio source going through a highly resonant uh, transfer function with a with a uh, pole near the J omega axis. What's it going to sound like? What do you think? Hmm? Maybe we should just listen to it. Or we'll just we'll start with the uh, by looking at the step response. Yeah. Go ahead and crank it up to a really really good one. Okay, so I'm increasing the... He's going to increase the uh, gain, and uh, our little sailing key filter here, we're going to get a... Um, so the actually, you can see the gain going up. Everybody see that? That's a gain of That's two. That's A. That's two. Keep going. I want a, I want a really good... Well, I don't know how much I can go because... Well, here, oh, because I might, I might clip. But, but when we listen to the audio, we can, we okay. can do it some more. No, more, we want more than that. Yeah, just crank the, that down. You guys think we're so excited we're going to get out of the quiz, don't you? <laughs> okay. That's as far as I can go, unfortunately. No. That's it. Okay. With okay. with cuz I have a 5 volt step we should uh, step in. Oh, uh well, maybe we can make that smaller. Let's make that. Smaller. Yeah, just crank that down. Where is where's the amplitude? There it is. We just lost sync, that's okay. Where's the the trigger level? I got it. There we go. Okay. okay. Let's make it more. There you go. Okay, actually, does everyone understand exactly what's happening here? This is the, the, the DC gain is going up. And you're seeing more and more bumps. So in fact, this should now be burned into your head. You should, when you see this right here, a pole location should simply appear in your, in the complex plane that will forevermore be in your mind. Com a complex uh, complex pole should appear, and that's that's a pretty healthy one. Okay. Okay. So, are we, we going to listen to it? You want? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Let's listen to it. Yeah. What do you think it's going to sound like? Uh, no one's going to guess, huh? Uh, what? <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Okay. We'll see. Are you guys ready? There we go. Uh -huh. <clears throat> oh. Sorry. Did you hear anything? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Well, you're right, it sounds crappy. Here. Ah, is, is that looking at the output now? Yeah. That's the output, okay. Actually, you can see something there. You have to do A, B. Okay. So what you okay. see here is that signals at the frequencies close to 2 kilohertz, okay, will be very prominent here. Can you see them? Okay, maybe if I do a comparison, you'll see them. Well, wait, actually, I can do this. Okay. You know what you see? When you look at that, how you, you what you you see you can actually see a lot of ringing at around two kilohertz. Do you see it? In other words, this, and that's not from the music, by the way, right? What you're seeing is convolving the music with this two kilohertz thing. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. compare it. Go, go do an A B. Okay, so this is filtered output. That's this filtered. Is, this is the input. Yeah. You guys see? See, there's not that much ringing at two kilohertz anymore. You see, this is this is the uh, now you're looking at the. Uh, why don't you turn this up to make up for the loss of the gain? You guys see the difference? So you can actually see the difference. Yeah. Look at the scope, okay? So maybe we'll quit there. I'm disappointed. You know, I'll tell you, the, I think the real description of what it sounded like was exactly what you two said. It sounded louder and crappy. 
<laughs> that wasn't the effect. If you make if you make the if you make the pole right up near the eigen the axis, you hear ringing. It kind of sounds like talking through a tube or something like that. That's what it sounds like. We didn't get a good enough effect. Oh well. Okay. So we have one more demo. We'll do it on Wednesday. We'll do it on Wednesday, and then we'll do our review. And now it's your favorite time.